Hello, um, welcome to the Embedded Linux Conference Europe. Thank you for attending my presentation. My name is Alejandro Fernandez. I will be talking today about the Octo project and how to use the Octo project on Windows. Uh, this is something that has been going on for a while. We, as developers, usually use a Linux machine to build the customized Linux uh, distribution that, that, that it's coming from Yocto, the Yocto project. And, uh, but sometimes Windows machines are more available. So it's, it's, it's useful to know what's out there and how we can take advantage of it. So in this presentation, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about crops. Uh, I'll talk about the Windows subsystem for Linux and sort of uh, go through the user experience of both of those things. Uh, I'll extend a bit further on WSL and uh, basically tell you how can you can create your own distribution. Um, I will talk a little bit about Docker and WSL at the same time. And I will do a performance comparison of uh, this, this uh, different variants of workflows. So first of all, CROPS. Um, CROPS uh, stands for cross platforms. And this has been in the Octo project for a few years now. Um, what it does is that it leverages uh, Docker containers for to allow you to build uh, or to get the Yocto project dev environment, which is always on an OS agnostic uh, sense. Uh, you can do it on Windows, you can do it on Mac, or you can do it on Linux if you want to. Um, interesting, the crops itself, it's a repository on GitHub. Uh, you can check it out there, I put the link there. Um, some interesting repositories there are the Pocket container and the extensible SDK container. Um, so go check them out and yeah. I won't be um, diving in a lot into crops because there's a very good presentation that happened at ELC 2017 from Randy. And if you want to know the details about it, you can certainly go and, and look at it. It's still up to date. So we, we saw we can use crops to, to build uh, the Octo project on Windows or, or other operating systems, but um, there's also the Windows subsystem for Linux now. So first of all, what's the uh, Windows subsystem, subsystem for Linux? The Windows subsystem for Linux um, uh, lets developers run a GNU Linux environment, um, in, including most command line utilities, applications directly on Windows. Um, there's no overhead. So it's, it's basically, the user experience is basically the same as running a container. You, you can just uh, issue a command and you, you get into the VM. So there are two different uh, WSLs. Uh, the version one that came out uh, a couple of years ago and version two that just came out this year, I think. With the pandemic, I don't even know. But yeah, I think this year. So um, there's a, a couple of primary differences between these two things. And the, the main one is that WSL version one uses a Cisco translation layer which basically interprets the, the syscalls uh, or many of the syscalls uh, from coming from Linux and allows them to work on a Windows NT kernel. So there's there's that layer in between those things uh, that allows them to communicate. Uh, the, the problem with that is that it, it's very challenging to implement all syscalls. So some apps might not work uh, on WSL v1, but um, on WSL v2, there, there was a, a restructure in some way. So this time, uh, WSLB2 uses actually a, a built-in Linux kernel. Uh, so there's no translation layer in between. And now it has full system call compatibility because of that. And you can get increased IO performance on most uh, cases. So I, I dare you to go ahead and try to clone something using Git on WSLV1 and it's not gonna be uh, very fast. But if you do it in WSLB2, it, 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 it just goes very well. Uh, one thing to note is that if you're working on, if you're mostly working on files that are mounted uh, from a Windows file system, WSLV1 has a better performance. In our case, uh, we rely heavily on Git, for example. We rely heavily on I.O. And all our files are located on a uh, Linux file system. Uh, so WSLB2, it's, uh, what we should be using. It's actually not WSLV1, it's not supported by the Octo project. So the fir first things first, um, 
the Yocta project uh, has very good documentation, so I encourage you to go ahead and, and look at it. Uh, the first thing that, one second. The first thing that, that if you go to the documentation and, and look at what it says about WSLV2, um, you're gonna get this. Uh, I'm gonna go through the, the several steps they have to follow to, to get WSL working. So um, the uh, first step is to make sure your Windows machine is capable of running WSLV2, right? There's, there's certainly more information on, on Microsoft blocks and stuff like that, but at a very, at a very high level, you need to check uh, what your what build you're running on Windows, and you need to make sure that that build number it's uh, later than 18.917. So to do that, you just, you just open a, a Windows co uh, command prompt, and then you type V-E-R, ver. So after that, you get the, the Windows version that you're running, and you can compare it to that. If you're running uh, a compatible version, then you, we can uh, go ahead. So the next step is actually going and installing the, the Linux distribution that you wanna use. So uh, this is very simple. You open the Microsoft store, you look for Linux, and then you get uh, several distributions um, there that are available. Uh, for example, here, I just posted a screenshot that, that shows uh, several Ubuntu versions and a Debian and SUSE. So that's the next step. You pick the one that you wanna use, for example, let's say you picked Ubuntu 2004. Um, so all you have to do is click on get and it will automatically be downloaded and installed on your system. After that, um, you'll, get, you'll get a button that says launch and that's it. You're, if you click on launch, you'll get a, you'll open a window and it'll make, the first time it will make some installation uh, and that's it. It'll open a window that contains uh, access to your Linux system. Uh, so number three, let's make sure that you're actually running uh, WSLV2. So to do that, again, you can open a PowerShell, for example, and then you, you type WSL-L-V, which stands for list and verbose. So if you do that, uh, you'll get a list of the distributions that are installed on, on your Windows machine. And in this example that I'm showing you there, uh, you can see that I have several distributions there. Uh, I have Ubuntu, I have Debian, I have uh, SUSE, and I have an, a, a three others uh, that are showing up there that are the Docker data and the dump file, which I'll be call, uh, talking about later. But the important thing is that you need to check, for example, there, uh, I got SUSE running on uh, the version one, the column, says version one. So I cannot use Zuse in this case, but I, I can use Debian, I can use Ubuntu just fine. Okay, so step number four is, is go ahead and start developing, that's it. Um, I, I just, I already told you that if you click on launch, uh, it will launch a window and you'll get access to your uh, WSL distribution. You could also, from the PowerShell, you could just say, uh, you can just type WSL-D which stands for distribution. And then uh, in this example, for example, uh, I, I'm using Debian. So I call Debian and I'm inside the Debian distribution. And I'm just showing you that I'm cutting OS release just so you can see that I'm running a Debian 10, for example. And another important thing is that I'm checking which kernel it's running. And that is because kernels are shared across the uh, distributions from WSL. So in this case, I'm running uh, for that 19 Microsoft standard. It's just something for you to know. All right, next step, it's start building. Um, so one of the good things about this is that there's really not much difference between the usual flow. So uh, once you start, once you get inside your uh, Linux distribution, you can just do the same thing that you do on, on, on your native Linux. Uh, in this case, I, I'm just going into the pocket repository. I'm sourcing the environment and I'm calling uh, Bitbake uh, for a core image minimal. Um, it's important to note that I'm building a dumpler release uh, 313 uh, exactly at the tag because I wanted to have a baseline and build the same thing on, on, on the several flows. So I didn't want that to change. Um, it's also important to note that I have already built this and this is building from S-State. 
Um, so I am going to give it a couple of seconds there. Uh, as you can see, uh, I, it, there's uh, 1,150 night tasks to run and all oh, estates, sorry, and 1,156 were actually were already found. So I have a 99% match. Um, so it'll be pretty fast. We can see all the sets in tasks executing, and then after that, it's actually doing the root of S. So that's gonna finish really soon. Do image, um, and that's it. So I just built a uh, customized Linux distribution using WSL. Cool. Now, uh, testing. Testing is exactly the same as, as if you were using a Linux, uh, native Linux as well. Uh, the only thing I did is that I ran uh, RunQMU. I passed no graphic as an argument, and there it is. It's just booting my Linux distribution that I just built. Um, I get a login prompt. I log in as root because this is a reference distribution. And then lastly, I'm gonna check what kernel I'm running. And if you can see there, I'm running 5.461 Yocto. So um, I got a distribution running. It's great, everything's working fine. Uh, so another thing that you can do is that you can test your distro that you just built uh, using WSL itself. Uh, to do that, for example, uh, in, in that example, I'm running WSL-L-V again. And as you can see, there's no dump fail uh, listed there. But um, after I do that command, which is importing the, uh, the tar file that I just built uh, for core image minimal, it's gonna run again. So WSL, uh, oops, sorry. It's gonna actually go inside the distribution. But anyway, so you check what um, distros are available and then you uh, call WSL that dash, dash dash import and you pass several arguments to it. Uh, first of all, you pass the path where your uh, hard drive is gonna be and you pass also the tar file that you want to import. In this case, that tar file is the one that, that I built using Yocto on WSL. So that's, going, that's what I'm doing right there. and it's imported. Uh, once it's imported, I can look at and list these things again, and you can see that dumpfeld 313 is there already. So I can just go ahead and run it, and the same way I did with the others, WSL-D, dumpfeld 313, and then I am inside the distribution that I just built. Uh, the one thing to note is that, for example, there, I am looking at the kernel, and this is actually using the shared kernel on WSL. So it wouldn't be as useful to try to try and test something with your kernel while using WSL. QMU, QMU might be a better option in that case. All right, so I just tested uh, a distribution. I tested it on QMU. I built it, I tested on QMU, and I tested on WSL as well. Now, let's say that I, that distribution that I just tested there, the downfall 313, um, let's say that I wanted to extend it for some reason. Since I can run it on WSL, I can use it for a different purpose. Um, so if I wanted to extend it, for example, uh, initially it won't have GCC, right? So I, it's, it's, it, to, for my development flow, it's useless. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna install the build, build to extend the tarball which is you can build from the Octo projects as well. And it will contain several tools that basically will allow me to uh, build Pocky from Pocky. So what I'm doing there is that I'm installing the tarball. I am sourcing the environment as if it was an SDK, just like that. And then after that, I can actually run GCC again this time. So uh, as you can see, I'm running GCC 9.3, which is the one built uh, using the Yocto project. So every development is different. Um, you can use it for, for different things. In that case, I was just trying to test um, a way that I can have a Linux distribution that I just built, custom. Uh, I can import it on WSL, 
and I can use that same uh, imported distribution to build another distribution and just uh, have more use to it. Okay, so I can also talk a little bit uh, about Docker. So again, crops leverages the Docker containers and um, there's way more information that you, you, you can uh, look at uh, on the GitHub uh, repository. But Docker now contains a, an integration with WSL v2. So it just basically allows you to run Docker commands from WSL distros. So what I'm gonna, I'm gonna reset that. And what I'm doing there is that I'm running a Ubuntu distribution from WSL. And then after that, I am going inside the, inside the pocket container repository from crops. Uh, once I'm there, I modified a single line to just uh, re I'm going to rebuild the container, but I want it to be based off on Ubuntu 20.04. So for example, I am just going to rebuild it. And again, I am inside WSL Ubuntu at this point. And there you go. It starts rebuilding. Uh, it just integrated uh, properly with WSL v2. So once, once that's done, um, once that's done, I can look at the Docker images, for example, and I can see that I built a crops pocky 2004, for example, and, and I can just run it. Uh, if you look at the instructions on the Git repository, you can see that um, the preferred workflow is that if you create a shared directory that you can share across uh, with your container. In this case, it's I call the crops work there. And then I'm just running that container and passing uh, that directory to be shared. And I'm inside the container now, and I can start developing. That is exactly the same flow that you would use uh, if you were running on on Docker desktop for Windows or or, or even on Docker from from Linux. So it's now integrated, and then I can I can basically just uh, clone the repository, and I can get a working uh, container that allows me to build a pocket distribution. It contains all the dependencies already. Uh, you can see more information on, on the GitHub for crops, by the way. Performance. So I thought it'd be interesting to show, uh, so I already showed you the, the user experiences and I think uh, they're pretty similar. So if there's not too much to, to, too complicated there. Uh, so I wanted to see, okay, what's the difference between performance? What if I wanted to use this on Windows or on Linux? So what I did is that I built, for example, uh, core image minimal. I used uh, WSL, I used Docker, and I used a native, li native Linux. Um, I built it several times, but this is the average time it took to build. And uh, on WSL, it took 79 minutes on, on, on this specific system. And then using Docker, it took 82 minutes. So it's a three minutes difference. And I honestly couldn't, pinpoint anything that was taking longer. I, I was actually expecting uh, something to take longer and, and me going to have an debug, uh, what was the difference between WSL and, and, and Docker? Uh, but no, uh, surprisingly, it was uh, very similar. So to me, I, I just looked at it, uh, they're pretty much the same. Uh, and I built it on Linux and it took actually, it was actually a, a bit faster, but by about 10 minutes for core image minimal. So then I, then I went ahead and built the same, it did the same thing for Core Image Sato. Uh, for Core Image Sato, or Sato um, I built uh, the, the same thing on, uh, on WSL, on Docker and on Linux. And this time um, WSL took 108 minutes, uh, Docker took 107 minutes, and Linux actually took 113 minutes. So it's only a five minute difference, but I think it's neglectable. I, I don't think uh, there's a lot to it. It, it could have been anything. Uh, one thing to note is that I did, so this is not relying on the network. I, I had already downloaded everything, but this is not building from SD. This is building from scratch. It just has all the sources uh, locally. So uh, as you can see from these two things in the performance comparison, to be honest, it's, it's, it's a bit boring. <laughs> I it, It's surprisingly good. So I am very glad that there's no real difference in performance. Um, and I think it comes to the fact that 
like when you when it comes to choosing which flow you're gonna be using, I think it's just preference. Uh, it's up to you. Maybe you have something on Docker already, and then you can leverage it. Uh, maybe you don't. Maybe it's just easier to launch WSL. It's up to you. But performance-wise, I I feel like they're pretty much the same. As you can see, even for Sato, uh, Linux took even more time. So yeah, as a summary, we we talked a little bit about crops. Uh, we talked about the Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, the user experience on do, on WSL and the user experience uh, on crops as well uh, extended what the functionality basically of WSL uh, by creating your own distro using the Octo project and and then uh, modifying it. One thing that I didn't uh, mention was that I installed the uh, build tools tarball. Um, and I could use GCC for example, but I could simply uh, install package management as well and use something like apt or uh, opkg or uh, dnf to extend uh, the functionality of the distribution that i'm using uh, i also talked a little bit about the docker backend of the wslb2 and how you can use the same commands on 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 wslb2 as well and the, we did a performance comparison so that's it um, Thank you very much for attending and let me know if you have questions. You can reach out to me at that email address, by the way. Thank you.